This is The Real House. The Conjuring movie is based on. In 1971, Roger and Carolyn Perrin moved in with their five daughters. We were just moving into a charming, lovely, old house. Their terrifying experiences were even more intense than the movie depicted. Wham, wham! The bedroom door stopped flying open out of nowhere. There are things that happened in that house that I won't ever tell anybody, nobody, not my family, not my sisters, not my parents, not my best friends, not anybody. Now, a new family lives in the house. We bought the house because the number one horror movie of all time was based off of events, real life events that happened in this house. And once again, things are starting to happen. This used to be Roger and Carolyn's bedroom. This book has been thrown from the shelf twice. Well, we've had a lot of things happen, just the doors opening, things that you hear, things that you feel. This is where me and my wife actually witnessed the shadow figure. My son had his experience in. One night spending the night and he saw a black shadow come over him while he was sleeping. You could just see this black mist just hovering right over us. And he said it moved around the room in here and then it just dissipated. With a quarantine in effect, this family is trapped in the house. It's just them and all the ghosts. I was in the room by myself and I heard a growl. So that definitely caught me off guard. And I had... I heard that. Yeah, just normal shit. Just don't pay attention to it. It's okay. It came from that room. I know it did. It's okay. It's, it happens all the time. Join the Heinzen family as they live stream their experiences living in one of the most haunted houses in the world. The latch does pop open sometimes on its own. There's this and one other latch that does it often, but most of the doors in this house have opened on their own. For one entire week, you'll get to interact with them and become remote ghost hunters to help them investigate the house, try to make contact with the spirits, and to capture definitive proof that the afterlife is real. If you loved the movie, you can't miss this once in a lifetime experience. Inside the house, live. Parent at the Ocean State Paracon. I'm here with my dear friends, and I will very soon be a guest on their fabulous podcast, The Claw's Corner. Listen for our broadcast. I hope you enjoy it, and thanks. Welcome to another episode of The Claw's Corner, the Zoom edition. Today's guests are paranormal, paranormal investigators that are now the proud owners of the most notorious house. It goes by many names. The Heinzen Home, the Farm on Round Top Road, and um, are just two of the names. Most people know as the Conjuring House, though. Please welcome to the show, Corey and Jennifer Heinzen. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Thanks you for doing? having us. Yeah, thank you. I want to introduce Lisa. She's a friend of mine. She is a huge fan of the Conjuring movie, and Andrea, who lived in the house, and she knows the story very well, so I asked her to be a part of the interview. Thank you. So, Hi. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with a hard hitting question. My viewers demand: Are you in the spirits practicing social distancing? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, I think we are, but I can't help for them. Right. <laughs> well, I I know you've been doing a lot of interviews. And I'm sure you you know are answering the same questions over and over again. But I want to start with how you became the owners of the most notorious house since Amityville. 
Uh, just by sheer luck, to be honest, uh, we, we found a post on a Facebook page uh, like at four o'clock in the morning and all it said was the owner was looking at selling the house. And that's all it said. Nobody had replied to it. Nobody liked it or anything like that. And I was like, oh my God. So I told Jen and I said, you know, what do you think about just looking at it, just to entertain it and not thinking anything that like we'd get it. Um, we made actually an appointment with the owner through her realtor because uh, we had friends down here that knew the realtor personally and knew the owner personally. And we actually got in front of the owner like within what, three days? Yeah, it's pretty fast. And uh, yeah. she didn't She didn't want to put it on the market. She didn't want to put it on the market because uh, she didn't want to have like a huge like zoo, if you will. Yeah. And I mean, it just it just kept going. Like we, we put in the offer, what she asked for, as long as it was the going, like what it valued for and everything. And we were like, okay, we'll try, just see what happens. And next thing you know, everything's getting approved. It's like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> you know, because it just didn't fathom us. Yeah, it, everything started to sink in. Like, oh my God, this is reality. I'm going to be owning the conjuring house. Right. That was what, two years ago or last, last summer, I think, last June? Yeah. Last, last June? June 21st, yeah. Well, I know the, the last owner, her name was Norma, and she loved the house until 2013 when The Conjuring came out, and that's when it became a zoo because everybody became a tourist attraction, and that's when she started getting angry about everybody, which I don't blame her. I, mean, I don't blame her. I really yeah. don't. Are you having the same difficulties now? Because I know when you first bought it, you were saying that it was getting pretty bad, but are people starting to calm down now? Um, winter was really quiet. I sure it's the cold weather and the snow that kept a lot of people away now that it's uh warm again yeah. it's busy i mean people are just constantly pulling over to take pictures but nobody's trespassing nobody's giving us a hard time well, that's good yeah. as long as they show respect yeah they are stopping in the middle of the road still to take pictures which i think is really hard i we usually have to go out there and say something because traffic is too busy to stop in the middle of the road yeah yeah well we can give people a reason that not to drive all the way over there and take pictures because this weekend you're doing something very cool and very interesting. Tell me about that. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, basically, we're going to try to do Big Brother paranormal style. All right. <laughs> we're going to we're going to be live streaming from the house for 20, 24 hours a day for exactly a week. A week. Yeah. Uh, starting Friday night. Friday night is a free preview. For people that just want to see what it's all about. I almost think it's going to be Friday afternoon. I think it's earlier than we thought it was Oh, that's be. right. Yeah. yeah. So tomorrow. Yeah. So, oh my God, is it tomorrow? Oh my God. <laughs> wow. So I can't yeah. <laughs> so how, how do people buy tickets for it? Uh, you can either go to our website, theconjuringhouse.com, or you can go to... Live. Oh, yep. Live.thedarkzone dot tv yeah. and they have like everything on there um i know some people were having issues um with credit card payments and stuff like that they got that all sorted out and as far as i know they can still buy uh discounted tickets no that until ended at midnight oh did it end at midnight last night yeah mm. <laughs> i didn't say that we're learning so much on this show <laughs> i know <laughs> well, what, what are the ticket prices is it uh, the pre-sale was fourteen ninety nine, and okay. that ended at midnight last night. So now it's twenty uh, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. And can you buy daily passes? Uh, we were told that was going to be an option when we went with the company we chose, and um, that's beyond our control. It's not an option anymore. So no. Okay. But I do know that everything is pre-recorded as it goes. So say you miss something on Saturday, whenever you log on, you can go back and preview whatever you want to as far back as when it starts. So okay. if you miss something, if you want to go back, you can preview anything. It's all recorded. And you have cameras in every room, and it's going to be um, streaming 24 hours. So Except the bathrooms. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, there'll be a lot of cameras. Um, they were able to hook up our, we have our DVR system where we always have it recorded anyway. So I believe they have access to nine of those channels. Yeah. And then they have. Um, Five static cams. Yeah. ISO cams. And then uh, we'll also have our cell phones to be able to walk around with. Walk around with. So 
there'll be audio and video. So when we call it a night at night, like after the investigation and everything like that, um, they'll be able to watch those nine cameras. Now, whether or not they'll have control of each individual cameras. We've been told that's an option. They is it an option? They should be able to click on different cameras if you want to watch whatever room you want. So the okay. cameras that they have available, you can rotate, you can change however you want throughout the night. Wow. The dark zone's running this. We're just yeah. the guinea pigs. So. I, <laughs> I have to say, I saw the trailer for Dark Zone for this whole weekend. It looked great. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're they doing an amazing deal. job. They, they've working they've been working off. really hard. And this is something that has never been done before. So since since we started trying to work on this project, we've, we've run into a lot of issues. But a lot of it is just because we nobody's ever done this. Nobody's ever been able to tr provide this much for the public. So trying to put all this together has been really hard, but they've been working really good. They've been, they've been working hard at it. Yeah. Well, I know Lisa, you wanted to ask them a question about the tours. Sure. Uh, and actually before I asked that, um, you said that they're the beginning of this streaming event is there's going to be a few hours for free. Yep. When does that, when does that start? Um, we, we were told before it was going to be after supper, but I think the schedule, the most recent schedule we've seen is, is it noon? Yeah. It's, oh. going to be, it's going to be for a couple hours tomorrow. Um, and it really is just a preview of what the cameras are going to look like, what you'll have access to, what we'll be doing. It'll kind of give an overview of what people can expect. Cool. Yeah. Very yeah. good. So people, if this airs tomorrow, people can be aware they can go to your website and get a few hours of free sample of what it's going to look like. Yeah, just to see what it's going to look like. I mean, it's it's, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. Uh, it is neat. It hasn't been done before that I'm aware of either for um, any sort of ghost tours or paranormal, you know, unless it, outside of a travel channel show or some some show. Right. Well, I think because I think because of the pandemic, um, I, I love going to movie conventions like Chiller's one of them, and a favorite horror movie of mine is Phantasm, and they just did the first virtual online convention because you know people because of social distancing, and I have a feeling that that's going to be the future. Hopefully not for everything, but right, I think right. more and more people are finding it that it's maybe easier. I mean, I know there's a lot of difficulties with people using Zoom because she had the same issues. But in the, after they get all the kinks taken care of, I think more and more people will be going with that because it's probably cheaper. They don't have to fly the stars in and different right. things like that. And yep. but I love the fact, I mean, I live in Connecticut, so I don't live too far from you. But the fact that I could just click on the link and see what's going on in your house anytime I want is great. Yep. And I'm pretty sure, though, I think the hardest part is trying to combine, I, I believe there's going to be chat rooms available as well. So when we interview people um, and when actually even us too as well like we can interact with people through the chatting and I think that's the hardest part is trying to trying to get these cameras and the chat room and everything going all at once to be able to be a virtual I don't know paragon. option for everybody yeah a virtual <laughs> paragon well speaking of cameras our mutual friend Bill Brock he's an investigator as well he was filming at your house for several months and I think he's coming out with a documentary is that correct or He's on the status of that. He's got a lot of, yeah, I think he's working on it, but actually never even asked him how yeah, he's, he's to. He's been busy. He's the field producer for this event. Yeah, he's oh, been so. oh, oh my God, God yeah. yeah. You don't he's, want to see him right now. He's stressed. He's doing, <laughs> he's doing all the behind the scene work here. Like everyone from California that's working on this, nobody flew out for this. Nobody, Bill's doing all the work here. They've wow. made everything and he's just doing all the behind the scene stuff. So he's working Great. hard. Can, yeah, you give us a, can you give us a sneak peek of what we might see if he does release the footage of everything he's filmed over the last several months? Did he capture any any images, black mists? I'm not sure if he even... He never really, he's never really done any like investigating as far as a documentary. He's just, he's just really talked to the individuals. Like when we had all the parents here during Kindred Spirits, yeah. he was able to sit down with all of them one at a time and document their experiences right. and then uh keith and carl johnson mm -hmm. um andrew when she was here yeah. i believe roger it was more of like a um in-depth history of the home and their experiences yeah well, that was a perfect segue because i want to talk about fact versus fiction everybody yeah. knows the movie is a great movie but how accurate is the movie compared to what actually happened <laughs> we were told that 
it was it was close, but they took a lot of liberties with it, and uh, what happened in real life was far worse. And they actually had to tone it down to get an R rating. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So there was a lot lost in translation. Um, and, you know, that just – anybody that's read Andrea's books, House of Darkness, House of Light, they they can tell you, you know, it, it was just that bad. And that they didn't even go into detail on some of the things that they, they Experience. experienced. Yeah. So well, In the movie, Bathsheba is the evil spirit. I know there, that could be disputed. What's your opinion? Um, we've been staying pretty neutral on that because we have not ourselves found any facts. So for us to be convinced, we have to be able to see something on paper. We just can't find anything that that shows us for a fact that she was even here or even that she was trialed as a witch. We like we just can't find the facts for that. So until we, until we can, we're just kind of neutral on that. I'm not convinced that she was here, but I'm not disputing that she was either. Like, yeah. We're just kind of neutral on that one, really. I mean, if she was a witch, she wouldn't be buried in consecrated ground. Yeah. She's buried in the cemetery right down the road from here, you know, with her two children. There's, it just, nothing really adds up. I mean, we've, are we saying that Lorraine Warren was wrong for bringing her name into the fold? No, because that's her opinion as a professional, you know, and we've had other psychics that have come in and said the same thing. They're like, don't think that she, the Sheba is, you know, all null and void in this story. Right. You know, so it's like, who's, who's telling the truth? Who's, we don't know. Well, it's almost so impossible it's like, to know for sure. I mean, there's, you can right. speculate, but to say like, oh, that's definitely Bathsheba. It's, right. You know what's a shame though? Lisa and I, after the first Paracon, where we met you originally in Rhode Island, we went to go visit her grave. First year we took some pictures of it. The second year, somebody destroyed it. And it's yeah. a shame that even like, if she was a witch, she wasn't a witch. Why do people have to do that? I think right. I heard you say one time, it's like, I'm more afraid of the living than I am the dead. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, it's yeah, true. it's true. They do more damage. They do yep. more damage. Yeah, and I believe they said that their gravestone has been tampered with more than once. I want to say three, three times. times. And that's wow. why they decided not to fix it again because they, it keeps getting destroyed. That's mm -hmm. a shame. It is. Well, let's go back to uh, Corey and Jen Hines in the early years, though. <laughs> um, did you find the paranormal interesting in early age? Did you start off as a young kid being interested, or was it later in life? Uh, for me, it was kind of an early age. I mean, I didn't think I'd be pursuing it. I mean, I grew up like always going in my like elementary school library, middle school library and looking for like all the weird stuff, Loch Ness monster books, UFOs and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, that stuff, like I really got into that stuff, you know, because it was something that it, it's not true, but yet how are you getting all these pictures and stuff like that? So, you know, it was just, something that I really enjoyed reading about, if you will. And then yeah. I just got, I had an experience and after that, I just got bit by the bug. So what was your experience and how old were you? Uh, how old were you? Uh, 21? It's been early 20s. Okay, so. Yeah. yeah. I think I was uh, uh, 21. Uh, I had an experience. Uh, I was on a battlefield, uh, Civil War battlefield in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, and we were doing a, a battlefield study for the Marine Corps. And what happens is we go out the night before, we bivouac on the battlefield, kind of like a camaraderie building thing. Um, spend the night out there. The next day we do a tour with the tour guide. And then uh, we separate and we try to recreate how we would have fought with the te techniques and the tactics that we know nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, that night, probably around two o'clock in the morning, we got woken up by gunfire, cannon fire, screaming. But yet there was nothing there. There was no, there was no lights. There was no people running around or anything like that. It woke us all up. We didn't know what was going on. Um, the next morning, the tour guide came out and he's like, "Oh yeah, it happens all the time." <laughs> like, no, I, hey, I don't. You get used to it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was just, it was just, it was crazy. Oh, 
So yeah, that would definitely um, make me want to become more interested and find out what's going on. Now with you, Jen, did you become more interested after you met Corey or were you the same way? You had experiences when you were younger and then um, you, you became interested. Corey kind of gave me the bug, I guess. Once he was really into it, um, he'd come home and he'd talk about it and show the stuff that he'd find or hear. Drag me, started dragging me along with him and that's, I guess, when I get hooked. I grew she up makes in, it sound bad. <laughs> I grew up on a house, though, so it's not like it was anything new to me. I mean, we just, I grew up with my mom telling me the house was haunted and everything was just normal, I guess. We didn't really talk about it. We didn't, it wasn't scary. It was just normal. Yeah, see, okay. for me, I, I, you can ask Lisa about this. I really, I'm not afraid of any of that. I'm just more interested and it piques my interest and I would love to see something. I mean, I don't want to become possessed. I want, right. I'd like to meet Casper the ghost, but I mean, things like door slamming or seeing a mist would not really scare me. I'd just really be more intrigued by that. So right. I know some people just, I don't want to talk about it and they don't even really want to mention it if something happens to them. For me, I'm just the opposite. I would yeah. love to see something. Now, do you do, you do investigations? The two of you, or do you, do you have a team? Well, it's like a ragtag team. Okay. <laughs> it's just, you know, a bunch of our friends that they help out down here, like Bill, um, yeah. Bill yeah. Brock, uh, John Huntington. Yeah. Um, those are really the guys that we associate with when we go out hunt, uh, investigating anyways. So. Yeah, we don't really have a team anymore. I mean, no. you, he was part of a couple of different teams over the last, like, 10 years. And, it, yeah, life gets so busy that we just – Yeah. Yeah, we just kind of do our own thing. Now, what was the most interesting case that you had? Where you had? Did you have a case that absolute proof this place is haunted? You saw ghosts, things were flying across the room. Did you have anything like that happen? Uh, I helped. I actually helped out on a case with Deb and Larry Alward. Yes, I know um, them. Yep, yeah, uh, we talked about it. Where was in Connecticut there last okay. year? And uh, yeah. If anybody ever calls and asks me to assist in an exorcism again, I'll never wait, do it. Wait, wait, let's stop right there. Exorcism again? So you, you were involved in an exorcism? For the moment, yes. 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 And like when I say that, I was just basically like a bouncer, if you will. Yeah. I just make sure like the possessed wouldn't get out the door. That's how I was, that's how I was associating it as. I was like, okay, I can do that, you know, and you, you think going into it, you know, it's probably just mental illness or something like that. And at no point did I even fathom that it could be real, you know, even though Deb and Larry are like very, very, very well respected in the field. I just thought, you know, maybe somebody got, got in and they're like, oh yeah, we need help. And, you know, Deb and Larry yeah. will you know, go out of their way for anybody. They would, yeah. And yeah. it it was the real thing. And I was seeing stuff that I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like it wasn't like the movies, but it was just subtle things and things that happened real fast. That just, just makes your mind just go, Oh my God, this is real. And I don't want to be part of this right now. So now, who was possessed? How old was the kid person? There was actually two of them. It was a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Uh, I think he was 21 and she was 19 <laughs> playing with the Ouija board. Wow. And um, he had just gotten out of the hospital after, don't quote me, I want to say like 20 to 30 days. Yeah, it was a couple weeks, yeah. And I mean, they had videotape of him in the hospital. The doctors released him with the diagnosis of an enlarged spleen. That was it. They could not find out what was going on with him. You know, and so the team that ended up investigating this whole thing, um, Central Maine Ghost Hunters, um, they were the ones that brought it to Devin Larry's attention and they're like, they need help because the, the local clergy wasn't open because they were non-denominational. Yeah. So, you know, Devin Larry, like, you know, stepped up to the plate. So. Is he, is, uh, are they okay now? If you, do you keep in contact with them or do you know what, what they're like, are they fine now? Uh, as far as I know, they are. Uh, I it wasn't my case, so I don't have to do the yeah the follow you know, follow ups and stuff like that, the aftercare. Um, but I'm sure if there would be any issues, I know for a fact. Um, Dustin, who's like the lead investigator with Central Maine Ghost Hunters, he would he would reach out and let me know. 
so. Just out of curiosity, what kind of things were happening? Because I know you said it's nothing like The Exorcist, or um, what, what kind of things were happening to this couple that were different from the movies? Um, well, what I wasn't aware of was if you have two people that are quote unquote touched by something that has never walked the earth, it can jump in between them. Oh, really? So as the boyfriend was, was having the rites of exorcism performed on him, I was sitting in the kitchen with the girlfriend and her mom. And all of a sudden she started acting funny. And I, I didn't know what, what to look for. I didn't know nothing about that. Well, she started getting scratches on her arms. Like her hands, were like she was ice, ice cold. Mm -hmm. She started getting scratches on her arms. All of a sudden her feet just started turning purple and swelling up. So I went in and I got Debbie and I was like, what is going on here? And she goes, the body retains water during the process. It's normal. I was like, Oh, okay. You know, it's just, it's not normal to me because it was just happening so fast. And come to find out it had jumped from the boyfriend mm -hmm. to the girlfriend. So we brought the girlfriend away from that area, trying to see if like, if she wasn't listening to the actual um, ritual, if it wouldn't affect her, but it actually was affecting her no matter where we had her in the house. So we flipped gears and brought her in on it, to, uh, perform the ritual on her. So yeah. it was a nightmare. Yeah. Years ago, I, so I live in Connecticut where the Warrens used to live. Um, and I used to go over to their house all the time for their museum. And I've been over there several times and they used to show the video of the exorcism that was the inspiration for the movie, The Nun, which the movie, The Nun had nothing to do. They just showed that basically they used the exorcism to make a completely fictional movie. But I did right. see the real exorcism. It was very interesting. Like she was shaking. She started having like marks on her body and then she fell over the staircase and they're trying to calm her down. So it was, it was very similar to what you were just describing there. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's something you have to, exp I shouldn't say have to experience, but just to have a, a greater yeah. appreciation of what's out there, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. Now, do you find with the, the cases that you used to go on that most of them were easily debunked? For the most part, uh, unfortunately, a lot of them was mental illness. Whenever yeah. we dealt with clients and stuff like that, um, I know one of the groups I, I was a member of, Maine Paranormal Society, they were really, really good about um, documenting everything up front. And as soon as we rolled up to that house, they, they were basically signing signing away their rights, uh, releasing us to the house. So basically we would have a right to go through their medicine cabinets and stuff like that. Because if you go through a medicine cabinet and they're on all these uh, uh, meds for uh, psychotic meds, psychotic meds uh, you know, but they weren't upfront with us about the in during the intake process. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you trust people like that? Oh, I know. No, I agree with you. So, well, getting back to your experiences, I know your son had an experience that really affected him. Tell me about that. <laughs> Go ahead. You, you talk better than I do. That was actually the same <laughs> I weekend. I think you're both doing great. So. Yeah, it was actually the same weekend of the Paracon. That's why you didn't see him on Sunday. Well, you guys oh, okay. And he was, he was, he spent the night Friday and went Saturday and he was supposed to spend the night again and come back and go back to Maine on Sunday, but he ended up leaving Saturday night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were there on Sunday, I think this year. Yeah. Yeah. He, we were all staying in what we call the safe room, but it used to be uh, Roger and Carolyn's bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, we were all staying in there. There was like six of us. Six of us probably. Um, I mean, it was because we were new to the house. We were nervous. We didn't know much about it, what we were dealing with or anything like that. We were like scared, that. so we all slept in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> but he ended up, uh, he had a black mass, like a, a, a mist floating above him, like he heard footsteps at first and then like just it was there in front of him and hovering above him and yeah. he just sat there the rest of the night didn't say anything and then the next day he's like yeah i'm going home right <laughs> and he, he still didn't say anything why yeah. he just said he just he wanted to go, to go yeah home. he just wanted to go home so okay. you know he's 17 it's we're not gonna pick on the guy yeah but he, was that the last experience that he had um that's that's 
probably the last profound experience he that had. That scared him. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It took a little while to come back. Um, he has, he, he'll bring his, he brings the cell phone where, with him everywhere he goes in case he needs to, he'll text me from like the shower and be like, Hey, is somebody outside the door? Or oh. like, hey, somebody just said my name or he's, you know, he's, he's still really nervous, but yeah. nothing like that has happened again. So does anything like happen like that to either you two or your daughter? Um, Madison is petrified of being here. Um, we hear we hear odd stuff all the time. I mean, we hear voices and stuff like that. I have I haven't seen the mass yet. I've I've caught it on camera, but I haven't seen it myself. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of. Well, there's one thing I could think of. I was doing some research on you and I was on YouTube and I have, first of all, I want to preface this with saying you two are the most welcoming, probably the nicest couple I ever met. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I was on YouTube and I was watching Beyond the Dark with Josh and Seth. Yeah. And I, I guess what happened with that is they were in your yard filming for YouTube. You saw on YouTube, you contacted them like, hey, you want to come down to the house and investigate? Come right ahead. And they were, it was so funny watching because they were so genuinely excited just to be in the house. And the fact that you reached out to them because you saw a video where they're trying to get as close as they can to your house. But the reason I brought that up was when the voice box and he had the headphones on and it was asking you, it had to definitely some choice words for you, Jen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why I, I, I felt like I was arguing with like somebody who had no idea, you know, <laughs> it was actually really funny the whole time I laughed about it afterwards. Cause I'm like, I'm arguing with a spirit that's just, Haunting me. <laughs> no, I don't know why he was so mad at you. <laughs> I have no idea. And then I'm like, he must have been talking to you, Corey. And I just was, I don't know. It was just really funny. We really did have a good time with them. They were a lot of fun. They were very excited to be here. And they weren't used to this. I don't know if they really knew. They were kind of like, hey, can we come over? It'll probably just be like an hour or two that we'll be there. I don't, they just didn't know what to expect. I think they expected to walk in and have things start flying around for the yeah. first hour and they were going to be gone, but they were here a lot longer than they expected, but I think they got more out of it than they thought they would. They just. Well, especially Seth. Well, he was, I think, you know why, and correct me or let me give, give me your opinion. Seth was more afraid and he's the one that went into the cellar and he was the one that was grabbed by the elbows. It seemed like Josh was more, he wanted to see something and in your opinion, do you think that maybe they know when you want to see something so bad that they're not really going to mess with you, that the spirits will mess with you more if they know you're afraid? I agree. Like... I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because Seth Definitely. was so afraid to go down there and he got grabbed twice. Yeah. And he had a lot of experiences. I think they definitely targeted him. Well, the first time that they grabbed him, even Kyler, Kyler was like, Faroo? <laughs> He's like, dude, something just grabbed me. And Kyler's like, shut up. Really? <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. They were a lot of fun, though. It was fun. Oh, yeah. They loved it. I think that was their first investigation because they mentioned it several times saying, I've never done this before. This is great. I don't know what to expect. It was. You could tell, too, because, I mean, seriously, I think they thought it would, they were just going to be here about an hour or two, and, like, they were going to get everything all at once and just leave. Like, they, I think they I think they idea. think it's like TV. Yeah. Well, what's that thing with the lights? I forgot what it's called. The ROM? Oh, I Rem forgot. Pod? Yeah, ROM. And they were waiting for that to go off, and finally, that's when you pulled the, the <laughs> headphones off and said, look at this, and that was going crazy. He ended up breaking those headphones. He was just so excited for Seth to be, I mean, for Josh to be able to see it because he, Josh walked around all night holding that or setting it somewhere and just begging, please, please, this is all I want while I'm here. That's please. all he brought for ghost hunting. Yeah. So he was like, you know, I bought this. I don't know how it works, but <laughs> show me how, yeah, yeah. Just show me how it works. So we showed him how it works. He's like, awesome. And the next thing you know, he's like, please just make it light up. Please make it light up. It was, it was, it was really funny. Hey, so if Lisa and I buy one, can we give Fessy at your house? Absolutely. <laughs> Come on over. Just beg it. Please, please. <laughs> um, in my research, there's one place that you went to that I actually went to as well. Waverly Hills in Kentucky. I was, um, I did 12 to 6 in the morning. There was a tour and I was able to spend the whole night there. I unfortunately had no experience at all. What about yourself? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. Nothing. And we, we did a private investigation from 8 until 2. 8 to 2 or 8 to f I can't remember. It was like the whatever their tour is. But, yeah, I mean, I, 
I'm sure there's stuff there. I mean, a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, just because you go to a place doesn't mean you're going to get anything. And that certainly doesn't mean it's not haunted. Right. Because I've oh, yeah. gone to places numerous times and haven't got anything. Like Penhurst, we were talking about Penhurst. I've been to Penhurst four times. And the first time I went, ungodly active. The last three times, haven't gotten a, haven't gotten a sound. But I know for a fact it's haunted. Well, we get a few things, but it's more or less trying to hear it on on the um on what bill was using to record yeah we get some stuff on that but not not what we expected you always hope to go into a place and like have it be crazy yeah do you get a lot more with the evps or the ouija boards i'd say i'd say the evps only because we don't typically use the ouija boards now with the evp because i saw going back to the show beyond the dark they and you can hear it loud and clear. Hi, Seth. Hi, Josh. That was and when we when Lisa and I were at Paracon, I was speaking with Roger Perrin, and he said that that day or earlier in the day that they mentioned they said hi, Roger. I don't know. If, so it seems like you do have some good activity with the EVPs at the house. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that was the EVP. Well, no, they said they miss Roger. Oh, Miss uh, Roger. That's it. Yeah, they missed Roger. And that, that was the EVP, EVP from the basement. Yeah, anybody you miss, and it was you couldn't you couldn't <laughs> determine whether it was male or female, but it, it said they missed Roger. Yeah, we can we do get a lot from um, EVPs and Spirit Box, and John John Huntington. He is like he's the one that gets a lot of it. I don't know if it's just because he just loves doing it so much that he just will hang out with the Spirit Box half the day, but he gets a lot of good stuff. I mean, he's, I think he's made a, made a lot of friends here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, have, go ahead, Lisa. The, uh, the things that you have found with the spirit box or the EVP or, or your cameras that you have, um, are you putting that on your website for people to go check out the evidence you've seen? Um, we put a few things out there. Most of the stuff that's on our website, we have an evidence section on our website, and most of that stuff is things that other people have, have captured, including John. I just feel like we live here, and I'm so afraid that people people are going to think, oh, they're making this stuff up. So oh, okay. yeah. I would much rather have everybody else come on over and you know gather your information and share because because it's not coming from us and people aren't going to say, oh, you're just saying that because you live there, you know. We have nothing to prove. The house, the house does it itself. We know what it is. We just want to share it and have people experience it with us. I mean, they, we just, we love to see what everybody else experiences. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking Great. of experiences, were you living in the house that week when Ghost Adventures was, was there or were, were you gone for the week and let them have the house all to themselves? Did you see some of the things that were going on? On the Halloween special, we were we were here for the well. I was I was here the entire week. The entire week, um, on site, uh, just in case like anything happened. But yeah. we we weren't allowed inside while they were filming, um, and they filmed on three separate nights as far as investigating. Yeah, so um, Corey was outside in his yeah. truck in the driveway. So if they needed anything, they had his number, and they did call him when they needed him. Yeah. And, they would leave at like three o'clock in the morning so yeah. you could go back in but but the, the the real cool thing about ghost adventures and kindred spirits is as a paranormal investigator i always like think you know the tv shows are just doing that for rating and stuff like that mm -hmm. but both of those shows actually caught evidence that we have caught prior okay. like before they even showed up right and it just validates the fact of what we're seeing they're seeing too and they're presenting as evidence themselves so it's like okay we're not crazy right <laughs> because they're seeing it right. so you know some of the stuff that you know, it's, it's a tv show but we know for sure that the evidence that they've captured is stuff that we've seen ourselves so we just know we just know it's real yeah well there was one particular incident where aaron zach and carl johnson all had the stabbing feeling have you ever experienced that? No. No. So do you, in your your opinion, do you think the evil spirits that terrorize the parents still are there or do you think they moved on and it's just more benevolent spirits now? I personally don't think that they're still here. But with that being said, we've been told from psychics to be careful with that, that 
whatever's here is intelligent and it's it either wants us to believe that or it's it's just laying dormant and it will show its face but i yeah. don't feel anything that i don't feel anything at that level of evil at all no yeah not saying it couldn't happen right i mean, I mean we're cautious because we have been told to be careful with that maybe they want to gain your trust and then they'll after you feel comfortable then they will show themselves right i mean we're not by no means are we sitting here poking hornet's nest right like we know what would happen with that you know we always come in here we're respectful you know treat them as you'd want to be treated and we've never had an issue right and that's the way we always you know we come in here and we talk to them like they're standing right next to us because they could be we we don't know right you know and never had an issue is it going to scare us absolutely you know if they talk to us or anything like that it's it's going to jump us because we're just not ready for it but it is what it is. i never scared. saw anything myself i can tell you a really quick story about i was over at my brother's house and he was he doesn't exaggerate and he was actually afraid to tell people this because he wanted people to think he's crazy but he said he felt the tugging on his leg and he was really told well, first let me preface that with he used to he came home for like a week or two before that and there'd be movies moved there was stuff on the floor. He thought somebody was coming to his house. He wasn't sure what was going on. Then he, a couple nights later, he felt tugging at his leg. He was half asleep. He opened his eyes. He saw like this old woman over him. So he closed his eyes, opened him up. She was still there. So I said, yeah, whatever. So unfortunately, and viewers, when you're watching this, do not do this. I was just stupid and arrogant. I'm not like that anymore. I'm like, come on, show yourself. Oh, sure. Show yourself to my brother. He can't show me. And he kept on saying, Rich, be quiet. And I finally, after about three or four times of saying that, the stereo went from three to ten lights when I'm like, okay, maybe somebody is here. But I never saw anything myself. There was only one thing that at least, or at least it wasn't with me this time. I was on a ghost tour, the Seaside Shadows of Mystic, and there was a house, and the woman said, oh, in, in this house, two young boys died during the Civil War, and they're very playful. They love to show themselves. So I was across the street without a flash. I took a picture, and on the left-hand side of the door, I saw something. Thank God for uh, um, cell phones where you can zoom in. So I'm like, what is this? And there's a picture. I'm gonna, it's probably going to be airing when we show this episode. I'm going to post it. Um, a picture of two young boys. So I, and I, so I said, let me make sure it wasn't you know, a flash or a light. I went back, took about 15, 20 more pictures. Never got anything like that. But I personally never saw anything. But I've had experiences where, you know, like with my brother, things would turn on, turn off, and stereo would just turn up. But never never saw the you know like the dark figures of the mist right and sometimes those things i feel like those things can happen and it's a feeling that you get from it that doesn't terrify you but i yeah. also believe that there are things that can give you that feeling that doesn't even it doesn't even have to hurt you or jump you or you know be in your face it just gives you the feeling that it's terrifying but we just haven't had that no yeah well, tell me about the, you mentioned the cellar with Roger. Is that, because um, according to, and Lisa can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the cellar is where most of the action where Roger was actually felt up by one of the spirits. <laughs> one way to put it. But they, <laughs> yeah. one of their things is that the well that's in the cellar is the portal. We've been told that's the portal. Um, obviously, water's a good energy conductor. We also sit on a giant aquifer. Um, and plus we're at an intersection of two ley lines, you know, so you got all this act, all this energy activity, you know, just meeting together right here. So it's like, who, who knows, right? You know, um, but yeah, Roger, it, where Roger used to have his sessions, if you will, uh, actually wasn't by the well room though. It was actually down the further end by where the furnaces are, which is actually the oldest part of the farm. That's where he would have his experiences sessions. <laughs> well, Jen, you gave me a tour of the house that when we were at Paracon. You brought us down there, brought me down there, and I know I saw lots of snakeskin. That's yeah. the snakeskins are still there. We think it's really cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Do you um do you find in that part of the house is that where you have the most activity in the uh, cellar? Where the snakeskins are? Well, we're in the cellar in general, or maybe, or is it more in Andrea's room or the Carolyn's room? 
I I think it's more in the middle bedroom in the library. The okay. the cellar hit or miss. We've got we've we've had some people show us some phenomenal stuff from the cellar, but that doesn't all people. I don't think it's. I don't. It that or miss a lot yeah. of. It can either be really quiet or really active. This yeah. hit or miss, I think. Okay. Well, let's move on to something a little bit happier. <laughs> Very recently, you had a logo contest. Tell me yeah, about that. Fun. We um, wanted to come up with a logo for the website, and I myself am just not very artistic. And we thought it would be fun to include everybody anyways, because we really wanted to come up with some really amazing ideas. And that was actually, that was a lot harder than I expected it to be. Yeah. There were so many good logos that that was really hard to try and decide. But at the same time, you also realize how difficult it is for people to understand, like, rules and stuff like that because it's like look you can't use this you can't use that and they're submitting it with it and it's like you can't take this and then some people are just writing down what their idea is and it's like uh, i'm not going to draw it for you yeah. that's why i'm asking for people to do this yeah you know and a lot of them, even the ones that wrote them they're really good ideas yeah i just i can't i'm not artistic i can't draw it myself and i hard to come up with a visual so it was kind of cool to see the ideas it was neat well i love the one that you picked for the winner i that is such a great design yeah we loved it too that was the first one when we got it where we were both like this is it we had a lot that we really really liked that we put side by side that we couldn't choose from and that's why i was like we should probably do the runner-ups because those three were the main ones that we were really having a hard time to choose from and then we just knew that we really loved that one. Now, what did they win? Um, uh, free night investigation here yeah. with five friends. Five friends, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And did they have any great experiences or any interesting experiences when they stayed there? They haven't come yet. Oh, they haven't come yet. Okay. The yeah. whole COVID thing is just. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put a damper on everything. everything yeah. I know. <laughs> so I, I saw that you you had announced on your website you were going to allow people to schedule um, groups up to eight or something to go spend the night. And I was wondering if you've had to put that on hold because of the pandemic. We have put that on hold. Um, the, the, last, uh, the last group that came through is when this first started in middle of March. Uh, middle of March yeah. yeah so we decided that we were uh, yeah we haven't had anybody come in and we <laughs> Rhode Island's gonna lift their stay-at-home order tomorrow well it'll start Saturday but we had already started we had already decided we're waiting at least a week before we let groups back in because that's a whole week of if the numbers spike yeah we didn't know what to expect so we weren't gonna start just shimmying people back in and it's a little nerve wracking. It's scary to think of people coming from out of state and mm -hmm. especially for us, like I feel like we if if it spreads it, I feel like letting people come here from out of state and stop at the grocery stores or gas stations or food places, we're spreading it, we're making it worse for everybody else. So we had just decided no. Yeah, I think that's sure. a smart thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a lot of uh, people request dates to come? before before it got shut down due to the virus? Um, we had a handful of groups that we had to reschedule. I still have probably three more people that once we open back up, we'll give them a date where they can come back. Um, a lot of people were great about it anyways. Um, they reached out to us before I reached out to them to reschedule. Even coming into April and May, we res rescheduled everybody. So a lot of people were great with it. They had a hard time traveling with the whole pandemic anyway so they were wanting to reschedule which is good well, another issue too probably could be the same problem that norma had with all the traffic are you worried about that with opening it to as a museum where people the road's going to be filled you know two miles down the road everybody trying to get to your house at the same time is that well, going to be that's why we haven't decided how to open it up during the day um doing it at night at least we can control we can control how many people come in and we can 
we look at as we're keeping them off the streets. They're not, you know, we, we let people stay overnight because anybody that's ever investigated knows it gets really good after two o'clock. So right. to have people leave at three o'clock or two o'clock, I feel bad for them. So we let them stay all night to help control that portion as well. But it's been really hard to try and figure out how to let people in through the day because, because of that reason, the traffic, the parking, if I put an open sign outside and people just stop in randomly, I'll never be able to control how many people are coming in. And yeah. that's been really hard for us to decide how to do that. A lot of people want to come in and get a tour, which I don't blame them. If I had the option before we bought it, I would have loved to have done it as well, but we just haven't figured out how to do that yet. We've been working with the town trying to figure out what we can and can't do. And yeah. well, I think even if people don't believe in ghosts, just the history of the house and how it, I mean, it still looks like an 18, you know, 18th century house or 1800s. Yeah. And it's it, the way it's intact is even if you don't believe in spirits or ghosts, just the fact for the history of the house is great. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I think I think it's actually, it was actually built in the 1600s, I think, yes. from An what Andrea mentioned in the books. Um, at least yeah. part of the house was from that era. I think they started building in 1680. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing. And it, it's in such, it's been well taken care of. And the his, you can just feel the history when you go in there. Yeah, it's amazing. absolutely. Yeah. And that's why we want to be able to share it with people there's a lot of people that won't dare to come and stay the night and I don't blame them. So they want to just tour th it through the day. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to figure out how to do that safely, how to do that without causing a traffic jam or issues with parking. And well, sure. Whenever you open it back up, you can count me in. <laughs> I would love to spend the night. <laughs> Good. All right. How much um, for a person that would like to do that? How much does it cost? Um, we've been charging 125 per person for the whole night yep yep we give them a tour when they come in they can come in at six um give them a tour and we stay in a part of the house in the back so that they can investigate but the door is right there if they need anything we're right there with them we've had to sleep they get too scared we've had to sleep upstairs with the group before so that was fun <laughs> oh, that's funny <laughs> did you did you have anybody that just ran out of the house and said you know what i can't take this i'm i'm leaving yeah yep. oh, you... yes we had a team come from Michigan. They drove 12 hours. <laughs> they were two, Just a couple hours. Two to gone. three hours. And one of, them, one of them was a psychic. And she was getting EVPs that were threatening her, saying, I know what you are. You're a psychic. You shouldn't be here. You need to leave. Wow. And she was like, yep, that's enough. They, they got in their gonna, car and they left. Well, they were going to sleep in their car overnight. And then when they were seeing stuff out, they woke up when we woke up in the morning, they were gone. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my. <laughs> well, speaking of that, at that same show uh, that the ghosts were harassing you, didn't it say something to you, Corey, about die? <laughs> something to that effect. I'm trying to remember, but it was. Well, when Josh was saying it was, they did say something, didn't they? Yeah. It said something about like you dead and you're like, why? And, and you're like, uh, they, they were like sort of harassing you as well. Yeah, I remember but, something. And it's uh, soldiers and yeah. dead. Oh, sniper. sniper. Sniper, that's it. it. Said something about a sniper, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. And because you were in the military, is that correct? You said, well, thank yeah. you for your service, first of all, but. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right, so Lisa, do you have any questions for them? Um. I don't think so. Uh, well, I think I got all my questions answered. I was really wondering how you all were doing in throughout the strangeness that is this pandemic that we've had just, uh, and it's sort of odd timing because it seemed like once you opened up um, the house for people to come spend the night is when this all hit. Um, so you got a little bit stalled right in the beginning. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting that some people are, are having such experiences that are scaring them enough to leave. And other people, like you said, may not see, like you guys haven't seen anything that's really terrified you that much. Um, I know Andrea in her books was talking about how um, it was a house with five teenagers, five young girls, and uh, it was always loud there, it was always chaotic there. And uh, Carolyn and Roger had um, issues in their marriage, so they would fight frequently. 
and um, her, her theory was just the the inner that their family had so much energy just between themselves that it was probably feeding into the the spirits you know uh, taking energy from them whereas people like the previous homeowner Norma and her husband were just um, you know a couple of retired people with no children in the house so they probably didn't have nearly the experiences that the parents had. Yeah, Andrea warned us too when we first came in if we were ever going to have a fight, if we ever weren't getting along to make sure that we no, left the house know. or, you know, she had warned us about that because she did believe that the bad energy helped feed it. And only one of us listened to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I find interesting about the whole parent story is I know that everybody has different experiences like we even talked about with the people in the house, but like the mother, Carolyn, was terrorized. The other daughters were so mad because they didn't want to move. I mean, I guess like if, for me personally, if my mother was thrown across the room, like she said in the book, I'd be like, all right, we got to get out of here. Like, right. like, even if you had a good experience, if it's messing with my mother, if I, I was really surprised at like all the different um, feelings that each family member had. Like one sister, I'm so mad. I don't want to leave. It's the best house we ever had. The other one's like, I, let's go now. That part I found interesting. I mean, according to what, you know, they were saying, they were jealous because um, they liked Roger. That's one of the theories, one of the spirits. And that's when he was down the cellar getting built up. <laughs> back massage. Yeah. <laughs> now, you mentioned um, people leaving, you know, earlier, because 12 o'clock is the witching hour, 3 a.m. is the devil's hour. Do you find when you have, that's the most, you have the most activity during those three hours? If you're up investigating, I think so. I mean, we find we have a lot of activity when we're not looking for it, but if you've got a spirit box and you've got your, your stuff laid out and you're looking for it, I, it's definitely active more later. Now, do you have the spirit box at the house right now? Do you have your own personal one? Or John has it, right? We have a ton of them. Yep. John okay. Has, I would, I would look. Four of them, I think. I would yeah. love to try one of them. I've never tried one, but just watching it and some of the specials, they, you know, the, the YouTube, the Seth and, um, what's his name? The, yeah. yeah, just that, but like when he says, what, what's your color, your sweatshirt? And he was red. I mean, he yeah. didn't, had no idea what the question was. It was amazing, yeah. Can you, so you can hear it, the spirits very clearly when you have the headphones on? It's, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to, comprehend what they're saying because what it is is a spirit box just sweeps through am or fm stations you know it'll go from 79.1 all the way up to 106.9 and uh it like it scans at a millisecond or whatever you know whatever it's built for and you'll hear certain words but then sometimes you'll hear sentences yeah. that go over like a, multiple stations and that's you know, that's highly unlikely. Right. And that's. So when you wear the headphones and you're listening, you're really just supposed to pull up the words that you know for sure you can hear. You're listening for words and sentences. So the one with the headphones is, is, is just listening to the, to the noise, trying to pick yeah. up the words. So it's, it's yeah. amazing. To, like we've seen so many really good method, uh, methods, sessions. sessions doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jen, Corey, I know you have a very busy day. You have more shows to do later today. I really do thank you for coming on my show. And Lisa, thanks for being a guest on this show. Uh, before we leave, though, one more time, plug what's going on this weekend. Sell some more tickets. Um, uh, what are we calling it? It's a, it's a week-long virtual paracon. Virtual paracon, a live stream and event. Uh, from here at the house, the Conjuring House. <laughs> for the full for a full week uh twenty dollars um you can watch us get scared stupid um, <laughs> but the biggest thing is all these celebrities that you know a lot of people wanted to see at the paracons and stuff that got canceled um yeah. you have a chance to see them you know from the comfort of your own home um possibly even chat with them um they'll be giving us their two cents trying to help us out, figure out what's going on here and stuff like that. Some of them have been here, some of them haven't, but they've dealt with things like this. Some of them live in a haunted house themselves. You know, there's just so many, it's like a whole plethora of guests. Yeah. So. Who, who are some of these guests? I know Andrea's gonna be there. 
Yep. I think she's going to be, I almost think she's going to be there daily. I think yeah. she's going to have a big part of in it, a big part in it. And Roger's going to chime in on one day. Yeah. Um, but you got, God, you got people from Ghost Hunters, you got people from Ghost Mine, you got uh, people from Paranormal Files, uh, the Holzer Files. Um, like I would mention names, but I, to be honest, there's just so many people that they have booked. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. So, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people. Which, like I said, exciting. we're just the guinea pigs. You know, yeah. I'm like, we're just going by the seat of our pants, and they're like, you got to do this, you got to do that. Like, well, hopefully, sounds maybe like a very cool event. It's yes. going to be fun. And if it goes well, which I'm sure it will, maybe you could do this like every couple months because I have a feeling even if things are quote unquote back to normal, it's not going to be normal for a long time. I think people I are still going to be skeptical to go out or be in crowded places. So maybe you could every couple months say, all right, here's another little, little streaming session. Yeah, I, I think that would be fun. I really do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know I'll be watching this weekend. I want to thank you, Jen, you, Corey, for being on the show. And is there anything else you want to say? Any last words before the show ends? No, hopefully we'll see everybody next week. Or this All coming. right. And on that note, that wraps up another episode of the Claws Corner, the Zoom edition. I would like to thank my guests, paranormal investigators, Corey and Jen Heinzen. I would also like to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in. Enjoy your day, everyone. <laughs>